Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture where we will be setting up the environment for Oracle so that uh, we can connect Oracle for our need and we can then start our lab. Now we need to configure an IDE that is integrated development environment as well so that as soon as we progress for other databases other than Oracle then we can easily connect them together from a single integrated development environment interface. Now we will be establishing connection with PostgreSQL, Amazon Redshift later in this course using Workbench. So here we will be using SQL Workbench by which we can connect a wide range of databases from different vendors. So we will do the SQL Workbench installation first before Oracle DB installation. Now SQL Workbench is an integrated development environment where we will be having a graphical user interface to connect to our databases. Uh, it's an open source tool which can be uh, downloaded from the SQL Workbench website. So let's see how we can download and install Workbench in our machine. Now we can directly search in Google by SQL Workbench and it will redirect us to the SQL Workbench website. So from here, as you can see, this is the SQL Workbench website. And I can see that there is a current stable version which we need to download. So once you click on it, it will redirect you into the download page where you can download the generic package for all systems. So just click on it. Once you click on it, you can see over here that the download has begun. As a very small file, it's like around 6.6 .6 MB file, which you can see here. Once we downloaded the file, we need to extract the files by WinRAT. Now, if you don't have WinRAT, then you can download and install WinRAT first. I believe we can also use 7-zip as well if you uh, have it already. Now, as we can see that here we have the workbench uh, there is build version 1 to 4 so we can just extract it over here so if you already have winner as i said then you can extract it over here otherwise you need to download and install the winner first and then try to extract just double click on it or open it and then click on extract to keep the extracted files in the same directory where it has been downloaded so it has been extracted so now as we can see here all the extracted files are here now we are having binaries for workbench so no need to go for a lengthy installation process what we will be doing here is to copy this folder into c drive so under c i'm just copying and here we can see that sql workbench 64 this is for 64 bit operating system and this is probably for 32 bit operating system so i'm going to make it a shortcut into my desktop just create a shortcut and then try to open it from open or run as administrator once you open it we can see that there is a pop-up window which is asking us to provide the connection details so this is the id which we will be using to connect oracle database once our oracle database is installed so we are going to do these things in three steps first we have already done that is sql workbench installation so this is done and the second step is oracle installation and then we'll be doing the connection using the jar file that is the jdbc url as you can see from here we'll be establishing connection on all this so you can uh, connect uh, a wide range of databases uh, from here like there are Amazon Redshift, there are uh, Firebird SQL, there are Enterprise DBs and if you go down then you can see that the H2 database engine, IBM DB2, Informix and like that way we will have the MySQL and Oracle as well. There is the PostgreSQL as well so we will be using this one for Oracle so once our oracle database is installed in our machine then we will be connecting through this we need to create a new profile for oracle 
so let's see that how we can install oracle first and then we'll come back to this part again so to install oracle 11g express editions which is free and we can leverage that so just search for oracle 11g express edition in google and then click on the first link once you get that just click on it accept the license agreement and then go for oracle database express edition 11g so once you do that if you don't have account created in oracle website then it will ask you to create an account in oracle so there will be some form which you need to fill up and once you fill up the form you will have option to sign up and once you sign up then you will uh, get an email from oracle that uh, to verify your email and once you done the verification it will redirect you to the oracle website for the download so once you download it it will show up in the download directory so i have already downloaded it to save the time so here we can extract it first then again if you don't have winrar then download and install winrar first and then try to extract so just do extract to and then keep the files in the same directory well the extraction is done so we can go and check so now here we can see that the setup configuration file is here and we can just right click on it and run as administrator so it's extracting all the files from the packages okay so now click on next accept the license agreement then click on next so this is the location where your oracle 11g will be installed so click on next if you want to change it then you can change from here like you can browse and you can choose whatever directory you want and then click on next now this is the root password which we need to remember so the root username will be system so provide a password over here and then confirm the password and then click on next then click on install and it will take some time to install well the installation is almost done now and it's creating and starting services for oracle database 11g express edition so we'll just need to wait for a few more minutes and it will be up once it is up and running so we can go over there we can create user and we'll be checking few things over there that how we can navigate to the sql editor window the default id which oracle is providing well it started configuring the database now everything is going good so far well as you can see that it has finished installing so just click on finish so once the installation is finished then you can just right click on it and open or paste the url what i have shown here so this will be redirecting to the login page of the oracle 11g database the default uh, user interface of what oracle has provided so here 127.0.0.1 and 8080 is the port so 127.0.0.1 is the loopback address so you need to provide the username as system and then the password what we have provided earlier during the installation so as you can see it has been logged in and from here we can create a database user or use existing so what we will do here we'll create a new database user so the database user name will be like so make it same and provide a password once that is done we can create a workspace
so once the workspace has been created what we can do we can just begin from here just click here to login and you can see the workspace name username and the password what we have provided during the creation of this particular database user and then login so this is the ide what oracle provides us and you can just click on the sql workshop and we can go to the object browser to check what are the objects available and you can just play with all these things and check that what are things which you need what we will do we will go to the query builder and here you can run some query just click on to sql commands and you can go that so you can just write a query like select star from tab just to check that what are the tables available so run it so these all are the system tables what we can see here and as we can see that the schema is eigen excellence right now you can create another database user so whatever lab we will be doing we will be doing inside this particular schema so we're going to log out right now so once that is done we need to download the ojdbc 6.jar so this file is required to connect from sql workbench so you can just go to the oracle site that is the trusted one i believe and from here accept the license agreement and click on ojdbc.jar so i have already downloaded the file and placed it here so just keep it here as it is and we are going to use the sql workbench now to connect our oracle 11g database so once everything has been installed we'll need to connect oracle from sql workbench so we'll open sql workbench from here and in parallel we'll try to go to the c drive where the oracle 11g has been installed so let's go to oracle exe and follow the path so here just go to product and then go inside oracle home and then go inside network admin so here all the configuration file for our oracle 11g are there so just go to tnsnames.oda and right click on it edit in your notepad or any word processor for here we can see that the host name port and the service name is defined which is required to connect from sql workbench as well so we will define the profile name here like i can excellence android oracle here and then we will choose the driver so in our case it will be oracle so now before choosing the driver you need to check that whether the ojdbc dot jar file has been defined for the oracle driver in the manage driver section so in the manage driver section i have already set it up so so just removing it and setting it up again like we have already downloaded the ojdbc 6 so we, you can also use the ojdbc 7 as well so ojdbc 6 you can select this one and then open it so now it's been set up just click on ok now go to the url so this is the jdbc url for connecting oracle so the host name you can give it the one what we can see from the tns names order but we can do the loopback address as well so you can just make it the ip so just make it 127.0.0.1 and then the port so the port will be 1521 so the port will be 1521 and then the service name so service name is xe here so just provide the service name as xe and then go to username so go to username and provide the username like like in excellence and then the password what we have provided during the user creation so we'll be using this particular database user throughout the course so now before doing anything we just need to test the connection whether it is able to establish the connection with the database so just click on test okay so now we can see the connection to this particular url is successful so just click on ok and we need to save this before you go forward so just save this as you can see that from here you can save the profile list 
So next time when we'll try to connect some other database like PostgreSQL or Redshift or any other particular database user in the Oracle database itself, then we can save a different profile there. So once that is done, just click on OK. So this is the default workspace and we can do some query here. So as you can see that we are connected to Eigen Excellence at Red Oracle, this particular connection profile and select star from tab the same what we have tried earlier. So as you can see that the result here, the all the system tables what we used to see over there from the default Oracle IE and we can see the same uh, list of table names that are the system tables here. So so now we can confirm that uh, our SQL workbench is working fine for the Oracle database. So that's it for this particular lecture and we'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye. Eigen Excellence. Education, Innovation and Culture. Please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated with the latest videos once those are released.